it's not me saying, oh my God. Mm-hmm. Well, like that's not taking the Lord's name in vain. It's when I do evil things to other people in the name of God is when I take the name of God in vain. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Iris Green Room. It's there on the wall. I'm here with uh, Pastor Lyle Phillips from Legacy Nashville. Not only is he Pastor Phillips from Legacy Nashville, he is my pastor. You and Allison. Huge honor. An incre- incredible team. I haven't been there in a little while, but uh, not because That's of okay. sin, because of spreading the gospel. Of course. But uh, I can't wait until I get back. It'll be a few weeks. Just so That's you know. okay. It's no problem. Do you, I always feel guilty. Like I feel like I should text you be like, I'm out of town. Like no. this thing comes over me. It's not required, bro. It, but you like it. Like if more of your people are like, "Hey, I can't." Do you want? Do you ever leave church? Like, why wasn't? Why weren't they there? Oh yeah, okay. all the time. I don't think that about you though, because I know both the calling and the role that you have. Now, when some people text me and say, "Hey, pastor, I'm going to be out of town for the next three weeks," yeah, it always blesses my heart because they know. That I see them, yes, and I do. It is it's it's real, and and that's one of the things that uh, you know, maybe not all pastors will admit to, but uh, we take inventory every single Sunday, and it's not because we're trying to hunt people down, right? But because we genuinely love people, and by seeing them, it's always encouraging. It, it's it's funny. I always feel like I should let you know that I'm not in town. Well, you encourage me whenever I preach because you are such an active listener. Do you know this about yourself? No. When I look across the room, <laughs> when I'm preaching, and I make a good point, and I'm needing some affirmation, if I look at you, you're going to be like, "It, come I, on. I really, come on. I really love your messages. And Thank you, you want to know how, it's, how, how I know that it's good? My kids like it. That's My awesome. My kids like them. That's awesome. So anyway, well, listen, we're, we're here with Pastor Lyle Phillips. I, I need you to do this. I'm going to say this from the beginning. Guys, you know I don't care. We don't care, but we are, we do this out of love and we do this with our time and we do it for free. Could you do me a favor and just hit the bell and hit like, it does help this move up in the algorithm. I don't know how the whole thing works, but if you could just take a second and do that, that would be huge because man, so many, so many testimonies, even driving here, Mm. I heard a testimony, uh, from, from someone that watched the last one and it's, it's crazy. So this thing's blessing people. So do that for us. And we're going to jump on in with Pastor Lyle Phillips. How are you? Absolutely. I'm wonderful, man. Yeah. Doing really well. How about yourself? I am. I'm busy, man. Yeah. It's been a crazy season since, since Moosey has gone through remission, which you guys stood through us through that time. Yeah. And, uh, man, it's been, it's been crazy. So I've had to like make up for some of the lost time. Of course. And, and also we got the send going on, um, and we have. I don't know, trips. I've been all over the world and, mm-hmm. and I still have probably until through November that I'm just in and out all over the place. Let's go. And then what? I'll slow down, Pastor. I promise you. Hey, you got an apostolic call of God right. upon your life, man. I bless you. What nations have you gone to? Uh, and what nations are you going to? So in the last few months, uh, Mexico, which was incredible. We baptized... Mm. We baptized about 40, I think it was about 40 people on a Sunday morning. Come on. It took an hour. Sunday morning. For 40 people? Yes. Wow. And dude, the stories I heard were out of this world. Mm. Um, One woman ran into the church. She was being abused by her husband, Mm. like physically beat to shreds. She ran for her life, ran into the church. There was some people from the church took her in and they basically like took care of her. Um, And... I think some stuff went down with the husband, right? It's, right. It, this church is located in a, a place that's run by the cartels. Got it. So it's a little, yeah. you, you got to be careful what you do. Long story short, pastor meets with a husband, brings him through restoration. He gets saved. Wife gets saved. They spent like six or eight months going through restoration, healing. Wow. And I was there when they both got baptized. Beautiful. Beautiful. Sunday morning in Come church. On. So from beat up to the husband and the husband just, he's in the water, like weeping. And, you know, they're, wow. in, they're in, I think she works for the church now. Just incredible. Sheesh. Incredible. The, the gospel that is, is awesome. Yes, so yeah, it is. Mexico. Only in church do right? we see transformations like that happen. Yeah. 
and and that that sticks you know yeah a whole entire household whole entire households getting transformed it's yes. it's incredible i've been all over america all over america um uh israel uh was that in brazil i forget man i want to look back at my calendar and see mm. uh where else have i been do you preach in portuguese yeah i pode Portuguese. Let's go. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, dude. I, I have to look back at my calendar. It's literally a blur. Mm. Uh, That's how it gets I'm, sometimes. I'm going to Singapore twice. I have Australia. I have Malaysia coming up. Wow. I have Israel. I have Crete, the island of Crete. No kidding. Yeah, all in the next like two months. What are you going to do in Crete? I'm going to make out with my wife. It's legit. <laughs> so it's a vacay. Legit. So it's our 20th, <laughs> it's our 20th anniversary. She wanted to go to Sweden, Switzerland, Switzerland, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but we, we don't want to go when it's snowing. Okay. So we're going to go to Israel with our school, the, our, yes. the Harvest School. Yes. And take a team there. And then uh, we're going to go to Crete right after. Just, Beautiful. And it's a, like a one hour flight. Beautiful. We'll spend about four days celebrating our, our 20th anniversary. And then next year we'll hit, Congrats, we'll hit bro. Switzerland. Congrats, bro. That's you. awesome. 20 how, how years, two married? decades. Yeah. We just surpassed one decade. Ten years. Let's believe go. it or not. Okay, best yeah. best bit of marriage. Of, actually, let me ask you a question. Sure, you ha, you got a lot of you have a full gamut mm -hmm. of age in the church. We do, but you do. I, there is more younger crowd. Yeah, we've had uh, Doctor Glenn and Phyllis on. Yes, right? which which you My introduced homies. us. Yeah, uh, what do you see the biggest thing in marriages? in the demographic that mm -hmm. you're working with right now? Like, what's the biggest struggle you see? Mm. Wow. I mean, it all boils down to disconnection, right? Yep. To borrow their wording, Dr. Glenn and Phyllis. But the reasons for those disconnections, I think in our city, are pretty consistent. I would say it oftentimes boils down to selfishness mm -hmm. and selfish ambitions, so I think Nashville is a city of dreamers. A lot of people move here from all over the U.S. Right. Looking to take hold of their dreams. And sometimes we have couples that move here, couples that are a part of our church. I was just counseling with one guy yesterday uh, who unfortunately is going through a divorce because of this very thing. You've got two, uh, you've got two people who are married, who move to the city, and they're looking ambitiously to take hold of what they believe is God's dream for their life. Yeah. And in pursuit of their dream, they stop pursuing one another. And so that's what I see all the time happening in Nashville. Yeah. This is a city of dreamers. It's where people move to be musicians. And yep. at this point, you know, the entertainment industry is exploding here. So we have actors yeah. and actresses yeah. and all of these people that kind of get married when they're younger. And then once they get older, they realize, you know what? We're no longer prioritizing our connection. We're prioritizing our ambition. And that's hurting a lot of people's relationships. Yeah. You and Allison, I think one of the things I admire so much about you guys is the way that you prefer each other. Mm. You do it publicly. I've seen you. I've been in your house. You do it there. Yeah. I, I, I can hear it in the background when I'm playing Fortnite with your son. Which I just yeah. played with him a couple of days ago. Oh, amazing. Yeah, it was great. Amazing. I think it was, yeah, it was a couple. It That's wasn't great. on Sunday. Thank though. you. Thank you for playing. No, he can only play on Friday, Saturday, yeah. and a little bit on Sunday. And then throughout the week is school, yeah. so he gets no games. We got to play for an hour. So Thank you for playing good, with him. He's such a good kid. He, he he really is. His heart is kind. Yeah. Uh, but you guys model it. You guys model it really well. Thank you, bro. What? It's not always easy because she and I are very, very different, <laughs> right? And so even as we're talking about mm -hmm. ambition, yeah. I can be very ambitious. And I don't think ambition is necessarily always negative. No. I think some ambition is actually positive. I actually believe in a biblical ambition. Okay, give it to me. Yeah, so I think that a biblical ambition is wanting to pursue greatness for the purpose of serving others, grounded in biblical principle. Okay, so I think it's absolutely possible to be biblically ambitious so long as that the purpose for your ambition is not that you're the only person that gets blessed when you achieve it. Right. And so I'm pretty ambitious. Allison, not very ambitious. She's ambitious about other things. Uh, but she and I, you know, obviously we connect uh, on the fact that we should both be serving people through the local church. She's yeah. probably a more passionate pastor than I am. Yeah. 
I didn't get into church to pastor people. I got into church initially because I thought it was a great place to do my calling. Right. You know, and she was always in it for the right reasons, which we were both in it for God, but she was much more in it than I was for people. I looked at missions as like ministry for people. I looked at church as a platform where I did my anointing. Yeah. And so when she and I got together, we constantly fought over what our church would look like, what it would feel like, what the culture would be like, what would the vision be, the mission be, Mm. the core values, how would we do ministry programs, and we would go back and forth. And so it's taken us almost 10 years to figure out how to lead a church together. Wow. Our church is seven now, and we have spent all seven of those years learning how to lead a church together. And it can be very hard because I like moving fast. I love fast, right? Like we're cut from the same cloth, right? Hey, if it was just up to me, bro, I'd be with you in Brazil. Shoot, I'd go with you to Crete. Yeah, let's go. I think Moosey w- wouldn't like that. But, I'd be uh, at third yeah. wheel. It's fine. That's Somebody it. here needs the gospel. Yeah. Let's go to Crete. <laughs> you guys go make out. You know? Dude, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> but my wife, is, is she, she tempers uh, you know, that ambition and that right. passion for me. And, uh, and she's so good at it. Uh, you know, we were just chatting last night in the kitchen, and, and she was telling me, she said, you know, sometimes when I go into the office, I feel like I just get in the way. Mm. And, uh, you know, she was on the verge of tears. She wouldn't mind me sharing this, but she said, I feel like sometimes I just get in the way, you know? And so why do you, why, you know, why do you feel that? And she's like, well, you and I, we just move at two different speeds. And when I'm out of the office for a while, I come in and introduce that other speed, that other gear mm. to the rest of the staff. And yeah. I feel like I kind of shut them down. Right. Whenever you're pumping them up, I come in and shut them down. Yeah. And so here we are seven years into doing ministry together. And there are still these moments where there's tension. But the resolve is, and I told her this last night, I said, hey, I'm not the only senior pastor of this church. Mm. You and I are pastoring this church together. And if you don't like the feeling that you get when you step into our offices, you have permission to change it, and Mm. I'll submit to the changes you want to make. Because we're in this together. I don't want to go fast. I want to go far. And the only way we do that with joy is do it hand in hand. Yeah. Dude, I I really, really respect what you guys built. And the way your staff, they don't just honor you, and they don't just honor you. Allison, mm-hmm. like they honor your marriage, they, they honor do your kids, they honor both you guys. It's we have it's a great in, team. You really do. You have an incredible team, mm-hmm. and I have pulled on them. Good. We really have continue. Oh, uh, some of the best counseling uh, during the cancer time. We brought we brought in. Um, God, my brain. What's Michelle? Her name? Michelle. Yeah, Michelle Fairber. Holy moly. Yeah. You just got like a sleeper counselor. Just brilliant. On staff, just oh, bouncing yeah. around on a Sunday. I know. And then you sit down and she's like, let me, let me listen to you. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh man. She cut right to the heart. Brilliant. Actually, the, the two or three times that we had her over and we would have had her more, but, uh, we had to isolate Moosey for like, almost like a month. No, mm. nobody could come in. Um, it was during that time she, she brought so much breakthrough. I heard she pulled stuff out of my kids that they had never vocalized. Never realized. Wow. It was great. So yeah, love the church. She's amazing. She is amazing. Yeah. She has a gift, uh, which is to communicate biblical truth mm-hmm. to bring you to a place of making a decision. Yeah. She's really good at that. Yeah, she's incredible. I really, really I I actually haven't had a bad I haven't had a single bad experience at the church. That's amazing. A single <laughs> keep coming, you will. No, like <laughs> The way, because you got a lot of movers and shakers in your church. It's true. Nobody bothers me. Not that I should be no. bothered, but like, yeah, you've created this culture where anyone, literally, freaking anyone can walk through the door. Anybody and feel safe. Nobody's gonna bother them. Nobody's gonna. It. I don't know how you've done it because you've married this total move. Like we're open to the move of the spirit. We want biblical precedents. We want mm-hmm. solid teaching. We want community. We want healthy families, strong families, and you've done it. And you're continuing to do it. You started a school, like school for kids. You started ministry school. Dude, I have more than once, I have, I've had your ministry school students at my house. Yeah. And they're gold. They are. They're they freaking, are. I shouldn't say that. I got in trouble for saying, oh my God, on here. Oh. Is that, should I not say that, Pastor? I don't know. I okay. mean, how does your heart feel when feel you say so it? so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just go with that. Just go with yeah, that. It's totally yeah. fine. Oh, should I say like, yeah. oh my Elohims? Yeah. 
Never mind. Nah, it's, I think people are taking out of context the commandment of not taking the Lord's name in vain, but saying, oh my God, is not taking the Lord's name in vain. I personally don't believe that, but you know, we need no, to No, it's not. It's doing evil in the name of God is what taking the Lord's name in vain actually is. That's what it means. Does it? Yeah. It's not, it's not me saying, oh my God. Mm-hmm. Well, like, that's not taking the Lord's name in vain. It's when I do evil things to other people in the name of God is when I take the name of God in vain. So you wouldn't say it's, it's getting angry, hitting your thumb and saying, Jesus Christ. Like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that either. Yeah, I personally yeah. wouldn't. I mean, that's my personal conviction. Perhaps though someone else has a different conviction, and that's okay. I would encourage them. <laughs> According to your faith, so be it unto you. Right. If you have conviction about, you know, hitting your thumb with the hammer and saying yeah. Jesus, like then don't do it. Repent yeah. quickly. Yep. And ask the Lord for forgiveness and grace for you to live the life you know He's called you to live. Yeah. Because different people are called to different things in different seasons. So, you know, I think when I first got saved, I definitely would never say Jesus after hitting my thumb with the yeah. hammer. Yeah. You know, but now today it's like I recognize that grace is not fragile. No. It's not. It's not. Come on. Well, Listen, I got a couple of things that I really wanted to get. Hey, let's your, go, man. Let's dive into on. it. I'm, okay. I'm so happy to share anything. Yeah. I love you so much, Will. It's such an honor to be here with the Green Room Podcast. <laughs> this is a podcast that I always wanted to be on. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Like when you were living in Reading and you guys did this podcast, mm -hmm. I was so jealous that I could never be a part of it because I lived in Nashville. So I'm like, one day, maybe one day. I will come to a place yeah. where I am qualified. Dude, you can come on all of them. <laughs> In fact, I, I, I don't, hopefully it will come out. I don't know when it's going to come out. Sure, yeah. I asked you to interview me and my yeah. wife. Yeah, it's a, my pleasure, man. So I don't, know if, I don't know if it's been released before or after, but yeah. I couldn't think of a better person to interview us. Man, it's for, an honor, bro. For talking about the, the season of cancer. So if you haven't seen it, it's coming out. And if you have seen it, you're welcome. Yeah, amen. Thank you. Lyle. I know it blessed you. <laughs> so I got a couple of things I want to share with sure, you. Sure, yeah. Because it seems like we've hit a vein, uh -huh. right? So you, it seems like at least on this podcast, we've hit a vein, mm -hmm. right? We had Steph on. Yes. We've had a couple other kind of people in the worship industry on. Yes. And it seems like, and I know Stephanie's a part of it because she comes out and does your stuff. And she does, man, yeah. You know that that stuff yeah. just explodes. I think she's carrying a word right now. Oh, Absolutely. So you've had her at the church. You've had her uh, lead worship. Mm -hmm. She's a she's a friend of the house. She made some statements on there, mm -hmm. and you know just about where worship is in general, the right. culture, maybe some more of the self centeredness. Yeah, I, I would love to hear your opinions on where, as you've pastored, oh you know, yeah, worship in Nashville, absolutely, and you've had some, you've had a lot of influence, I think, in the worship world. Mm pastoring from behind the scenes yeah what do you what do you what's your take on on worship right now <laughs> living in the city where it's right where money is made in music yeah yeah it's it's a very challenging uh season that i think we find ourselves in as the american church mm -hmm. because we've come into a new place that i don't know that we've been to before at least not like this yeah and um even if you look at the award shows, you know, you're now seeing uh, Christian voices, worship bands, right. you know, that are becoming so popularized by our culture that, you know, people are not seeing the line between sacred and secular in the way that they used to. You know, some gospel music now is just considered to be positive thought. Mm. You know, and so they're like, hey, this is just good, feel good music. And I like to listen to it when I'm having a bad day, but they don't necessarily see it as worship. Mm. And so I think what's happening is, is that and I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I have friends that have received Grammys for worship oh, yeah. songs that they've written, and that's wonderful. And I would totally encourage them to continue to do that. But the real issue that I see is not with the culture. The issue I see is with the church and particularly the people who are leading the church into worship is that they're losing a value for the priesthood. Mm. They're losing a value for the priesthood. Now, I have pastored a number of very well-known Christian artists, all right? I'm not going to say who they are. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Some people do know that, which is actually shocking that whenever things came out about those artists that were negative, they never called me, which is weird to me, so weird to me. But okay. nonetheless, that's what happened. The artist never called you. No, the people 
that were a part of other churches that were taking the artist to task and grilling them online publicly about their character, knowing that I am pastoring them, never picked up the phone to call me and say, hey, what's actually happening in their life? And to me, that's just evidence of the whole system that's a circus. It's an absolute circus. It's like, do we really care about the discipleship of these artists? Because that's a different part of the conversation. I love these guys. These guys are amazing. Mm -hmm. All of them. I don't know a single Christian artist that got into this for the wrong reasons. Yep. I don't know a single one. I've yeah. never met one who, yeah. who did not come in to the industry broken for the Lord and for people, wanting to give him a pure offering of worship and bless people to the best of their ability mm. and the grace of God that's on their life. I have never met an artist. I haven't. I've yep. n- none have been a part of my church. Uh, but unfortunately, I think there are, are times in which uh, temptation is offered and compromises are made, and then they exchange the glory for a larger paycheck. You know, I do think that that is happening. But anyways, nonetheless, the point of it is that I think that uh, worship becoming commercialized is actually quite dangerous because whenever we write songs that we get paid as a result of, the temptation then is to write more songs that get us checks rather than to write more songs that bring God glory. Okay, so wouldn't you say that is the church Mm -hmm. taking like the mountain of worship or the mountain of music? Mm Mm-hmm. Because there's been, you know, there's a lot of talk on like seven mountain mandate, right? Right, 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 right. So wouldn't you say that that's... Yeah, I mean, I think that it's good so long as that it is good for those people who are participating in it, you know? Like, that's my concern as a pastor, is I'm concerned for their hearts. Mm. I'm concerned for their life in God and with God. And unfortunately, the artists that I've pastored, the higher they climb that mountain, the more distant they tend to become from the Holy Spirit. And here's what we're saying. Well, I'm so blessed. I'm so, you know, we're, I'm really, really blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed. I'm taking the mountain. Look at me, pastor. I'm so blessed. And I'm like, okay, so you're telling me that God's blessing has led to distance between you and him and intimate communion. That's not a blessing. That's a distraction. Okay, so I'll be the, the artist, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. You don't know my heart. Right, yeah. No, I don't. But if I'm your pastor, God's given me a supernatural <laughs> grace to pastor just you feel convicted. right i'm like yes sir no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, it's yeah. like people are like well you don't know and like okay well has god led you to submit yourself to me as a spiritual leader yes he has okay well then in that you've got to trust that god knows what he's doing when he planted you in this house okay but i have my time and my time's right now and can't you tell favors on me i'm i'm just walking in the thing that you prayed for right yeah that's true but you know is it really favor if it's leading you away from god because that's not favor that's a foothold and you're deceived That's what I would say. And I have said that. Wow. The reason why I have that response is because I've said it. Because we've got people out here calling blessing what's actually distraction. And we've got people calling favor what's actually foothold. Okay, so as a pastor Mm -hmm. that cares. Yeah. You you legitimately care about I legitimately care about those people so deeply. In fact, I've told some of them, cancel your tour. Come off of the road. You need to come home. Be in church. Be a part of the family. No, no, no. It's my time to shine, man. I'm making money. I'm doing my thing. Let me get out of here. Let me go. Great. That's fine. Make all the money. It's your time to shine. Be on all the billboards. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is your soul, man, because the Bible tells us you can gain the whole world and lose your soul simultaneously. If they were to say, Pastor Lyle. Yeah. I feel like this is what I should be doing mm-hmm. right now. And, sure. I, and it's chaos. Right. And I know it's chaos. Mm-hmm. Would you come on the road with me? Would you do that? No. Okay, tell me, come Absolutely on, walk, not. walk me walk me through this. Right, like, I'm all for leaving the 99 to go to the 1, <laughs> but at the same time, I have a responsibility, yeah. you know, to my church, and I can't let go of all of them just to come on the road with you, you know? I'm not going to do it. I'm not willing to do it. In fact, if you don't need to be on the road, but you need to be at home, why would I leave the hole to come on the road with you? Get your butt back home. That's what I would say, and that's what I have said, and unfortunately, okay. I've never had anybody... Uh, listen to me about that. So, where? How do you bounce? How do you bounce this as attention? Because I've had different artists, mm-hmm. of actors, course. of course. What? It doesn't matter. Somebody that's of like they're on their upward, of course, trajectory. Yeah, favor. And and I do look at it. And I go, man, this like God. I feel like God's in it to some mm-hmm. extent. Now, whether they're handling it well is a different. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you navigate? Man, these are good questions. Missing, potentially missing this opportunity. Yeah. 
which you know can can change the trajectory of someone's life. And would you do that with, let's say, a real estate agent right, who was yeah. selling houses on Sunday, right, making money, setting up their family for success? Absolutely. These are really great questions. I think what we're struggling with as a church right now mm -hmm. is our discernment is trash. <laughs> like, on. I, I I, I'll, I'll just be honest yeah. with you because I think we're really wrestling with an inability to discern between the favor of God and the favor of man. Just because you have favor with man does not mean that you have favor with God. So how do you define, how do you see that? Sure. So just because you have the attention of men does not mean you're walking in obedience with God. I was recently sitting down with somebody, we were having lunch, and they made this statement to, the, to me. They said, this is who God is on right now. That's what they said to me. This is who God is on right now. I said, why do, why do you feel that? Well, they're blowing up. What does that have to do? What does that have to do with anything regarding who God's favor is on? Mm. So you're telling me because they have a bunch of YouTube subscribers right. and everybody watches them and everybody knows their name right. and everybody invites them to their conference. You're telling me that that right there is the singular variable that communicates to us <laughs> who is anointed. I think we're deceived yeah. because I watched my parents' generation wrestle with what we now know as a doctrine of demons which is the prosperity gospel. Correct. The prosperity gospel is a doctrine of demons because it tells us there's nobody who knows this better than Irish missionaries. Yeah. Right? Because we go to places where there is no prosperity and we see evidence of God's mighty anointing. Yep. I have preached in Mozambique and I have asked the pastors, how many of you have raised the dead? More than 10 hands go up. Yeah. And you're telling me because they're not big on Instagram that they're not walking in the favor of God? Come on, man. Yeah. So with... You know, our parents' generation, prosperity gospel. The prosperity gospel is a lie because it suggests that you are only as anointed as you are wealthy. Correct. Right? So it, the prosperity gospel says you are as favored by God as you are successful. Mm -hmm. Right? So yep. our generation, we don't struggle with the prosperity gospel because, you know, we see finances different and so on and so forth. What our generation struggles with is the popularity gospel. It's not the prosperity gospel, it's the popularity gospel. Because what the popularity gospel says, and it is a doctrine of demons, yep. is that you are only as anointed as you are influential. And you are only as favored as you are famous. Mm. And so we've got all of these young Christians that are pursuing, not pursuing God, but they're pursuing fame. Mm. And they're saying, this is what God wants for me. He wants to make me famous. He wants me to become popular. And unless I achieve a certain level of influence, well, I guess I'm not anointed. Yeah. No, it's true. You know, and it's a doctrine of demons and it's deception, but I think it's propagated by prophetic people making statements like the one that was made to me at lunch that day. This well, is who God is on. Why? What evidence that this is who God is on? Because they're well-known, because they're talented? Like, that's our variable to determine who's anointed? I think it's incredibly short-sighted and it lacks discernment. Wow. There's a lot... To unpack there. Absolutely. And what I'm not saying is, is that popularity is never right. a byproduct of anointing. Right. Because we know there are people in the Bible that God chose to make famous. Mm. If you read the story of Abraham in the NLT, he says, and I will make your name famous. Yeah. I will make you famous. And so does God make people famous? Sure he does. But is it God's will to make everybody famous? Probably not. No, and the stories that they walk through crazy exactly Absolutely they had to go crazy. through a lot a to get lot. to that place of influence because the influence will kill you mm -hmm. if you try to carry it before you're prepared for it yeah i think one, one of the reasons well what got us here was the conversation around stephanie and worship mm -hmm. i think one of the things that i really appreciate about her yes is she could care less she could care less she literally could care less she could care less and i you know I mean, I'll be really honest. I yeah. wrestle with, I wrestle with being known, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah, because, we all do because you want, you feel like you have a message to carry, mm -hmm. right? And you want to get it out there, but you don't want to self promote, of course. But you want to be a good steward of it, exactly. But you don't want to sell yourself while you're being a good steward. Right. There is a fine balance, I think, in you know, in the internet age and in the Instagram age of like even with this like even with this podcast right like sure i want this to bless people absolutely and it is 
Yes. And we brainstorm, like, who can we have on? Like, wh- who do we want to get? Yes. And I found myself being like, oh, we can get this person. And, oh, like, we can do that person. And that's not how it started out. It started right. out with just me and friends. Yes. And now we have people that are like, hey, I want to come on and do a book and do this. And it's just like, and that's awesome. And we right. get views. And I think that that's being a good steward, but I don't want to sell out either. And I Absolutely. just, I don't, it's like there's this balance in all of it. Pastor me. I've just been telling people this. We don't pursue fame. We steward influence. That's it. We don't pursue fame. We pursue Jesus. Mm. But any influence he provides us, we steward it. Yeah. But more than we want the favor of man, we want the favor of God. And sometimes the favor of God leads to a wilderness. No one followed God Whew. any closer than Jesus. That's a and good where did he word. go? That's a good <laughs> Through word. the Garden of Gethsemane. Right. Right? And he had three years. Three years. And three that's years. it. His ministry was so powerful, the principalities and powers couldn't allow it to last longer than three years. And life will arrange for everybody's Good Friday. If you're following God that <laughs> close, you will run through the Garden of Gethsemane, primarily because God wants to get the anointing out of your life that you've asked him for. Mm. And that's what Gethsemane means. It means the oil press. Oh, yeah. I was you there know what I mean? a couple months ago. And three times. They press it three times. You don't just press it once. I mean, you can press it once. It's got to get you to get all of it out. You can press it once, but it's not the purest. Well, a lot of people are asking, times. how do I get more anointed? Do you ever get asked that question? I get asked I that question. I don't think a week goes by where it Come doesn't on, get man. asked all the time. Everybody asks that question. Yeah. Come on. We are under Heidi Baker's authority, right? Yeah. As yeah. part of Iris. Mm-hmm. Like, Heidi's our spiritual mom. Who I know of nobody more anointed. Than Heidi Baker, all right? Aside from Jesus himself. There's no one that I've personally (laughs) met that's more anointed than Heidi. That's just, that's me, right? And I love Heidi so much, and I honor and adore her and admire her so much for a number of reasons. But one of the reasons that I really, really like her is not because she's so anointed, but because of the burden that she carries for people. Yeah. And we can get into that if you want to, but I want to resolve that question, which is like, how do I get more anointed, Mm -hmm. right? So one of the things that I've been fascinated by in the scripture is whenever Jesus, he gets baptized, right? And then he goes to the wilderness and we see in the scripture that it says he was sent there by the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. So he's led by the spirit into a wilderness. A lot of people don't want to believe that to be the case, that Mm -hmm. if I'm being led by the spirit, my life will always be great. Right. But no, sometimes the spirit will lead us into wildernesses, but there's always a purpose in the wilderness. God prepares prophets in the wilderness. He prepared Jesus in the wilderness. He prepared Elijah in the wilderness. He prepared Moses in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. It's what he does. John the Baptist. John the Baptist in the wilderness. So Jesus goes out into the wilderness and what does he do? He prays. He Mm fasts. All right. So the way in which I've always encouraged people to grow in the anointing. How do I grow in the anointing? Here's what I say. You pray and you fast because whenever Jesus came out of the wilderness, the Bible says that he came out in the power of the spirit mm. and power and anointing is a mm-hmm. synonymous word in scripture. So all that being said, I've always told people, here's how you grow in the anointing. You pray and you fast, but you know what? I missed something. Tell me. This is what I missed. And I think this is the unsung attribute of growing in the anointing will. Okay. It is facing temptation and saying no to it. Right. Because the, that's what Jesus did in the wilderness, other than pray and fast, is he said no to temptation. And the temptation was popularity. Absolutely. Control, control and power. Absolutely. So what I'm suggesting here. Give it to me. Is that we grow in the anointing as we resist temptation, and our anointing dissipates as we accept it. Wow. That's what I'm suggesting. That's a good word. You want to steward the anointing, you have to resist temptation. You want your oil to dissipate every time it knocks on the door, you let it in. And that's where we're back to the industry. Mm. You're speaking of Gethsemane, right? So you, mm-hmm. Jesus is crying out. Lord, yes. Would you take this from me? Yes. But, but if it's your will. If it's your will. Right. And I, what I love is the disciples. What is it? There was three of them that he, that he said, come yes. with me. So he yes. handpicks, come with me, watch, stay, watch, keep that's watch. Right. And they fall asleep. And was it three times he came back? Come back, hey, can you not, you know, like, pray with me an boys hour? What are you doing? Yeah. And, and they couldn't even pray with him an hour. And and he was telling them, like, this is the time. Yes. Stay with me. Yeah, and stay it, woke. Boys couldn't do it. They couldn't do it, man. Which I think is indicative of where we all are with the Lord, you know. It's mm-hmm. like, bro, I wouldn't do any better. 
I can yeah. tell you right now, bro, I'd be snoozing. Dude, those guys were crushing it. <laughs> they were amazing, <laughs> so bro. Tired. I'd yep. be out there snoozing, you know, lack of discernment, mm. you know, despite mm. the fact that we've heard all these sermons from Jesus Christ himself, we yeah. still don't know. Like, oh, it's actually the hour. Yeah. I wow. mean, is that not, you know, a great picture of where so many disciples are today? We're within earshot of Jesus praying and just sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, man. Right? It's tough. Well, but I look at all those stories and I go, okay, there's hope for me. Absolutely. Right? Because it didn't change the fact whether they were used or not. Exactly. He still used them. 11 of them, you know, get, were martyred. Yes. Yes, yeah. that's right. They're all martyred. Yeah. It, need to remember that. I think it's really, like, I love that about the story of Jesus, of Peter walking on water. You know, like, the whole thing was, yeah, he f- took his eyes off, but he was still used. That's right. And he was still with Jesus. Like. <sighs> Grace, I think it, man. There is that grace. Mm-hmm. There is that grace in the middle of it. And I love the way he just, he he calls us out, you know. It's ama- he's amazing. Have you been to Israel yet? No. When are you going to come? I don't know. I've been invited so many times. Can you come with, you need to come Wind. with Iris. I would love to come with Iris. I probably wouldn't make it back. I'd be so wrecked. No joke. It changed my life. Really? Yes. I, I want to go. I, 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 can't, I, I can't even tell you how many times I've been invited. Some of my trips offered full. Yep. We'll pay for everything, yep. right? We'll pay for your flights, your food, your lodging, your tour. We'll pay for everything if you just go. I never and I wanted just to have go. never gone. I never wanted to go because I saw the freaks uh, in the charismatic movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I shouldn't say that. I saw all yeah. the weird <laughs> stuff. Like, oh, no, no, no. Like, I have seen some stuff yeah. that like. We should be called out. Like, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I'm talking about the extreme, extreme. And then there's like a lot of wacky. And yeah. then there's a lot of, like there's a little bit of ignorance. Sure. And then there's some really beautiful stuff in the middle. But, it, yeah. you know, unfortunately, I always remember the weird person, you know, screaming yeah. out, my name's Pentateuch. And, you know. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, interesting. Legit, that, true story. That happened. Man, true I story. mean, this is the, so... It's like every time I'm with you, sometimes I just throw out these like bones to pick that I have, you know, (laughs) but like, I just want to know why are we doing, why are we tolerating that crazy charismatic behavior? And I hate to label it charismatic because not everybody's guilty of it, but it's like, why don't we address it? Like when people are being, when people are being weird, you know, it's like, uh, what about whenever Paul's writing to the Corinthians? Like, Hey, whenever an unbeliever comes into the church, they shouldn't perceive you as being crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like, well, what's crazy then? Yeah, so that's the, a good and question. This is the this is the larger qu- question. So let's unpack this for a second. Yeah. You we have Christendom, right? Yes. And it is, it's massive. Yeah, I'm dude. I'm asking you this question. It I'm, is massive. So you got you got you got extreme in all the different aspects. I think there's extremism right. in the hyper theological. Oh yeah. Double predestination, like absolutely, like control. Absolutely, you know, uh, misogynistic Christian. Yes. Like there's, you got yes. it over there. You got the extremes over you there. You got it all. Yeah, and you got the extremes uh, in the spirit filled camp of yes. like, you know, we're taking trips to heaven at will. You yeah, know, yeah, angels yeah. feed me manna for breakfast. Right, we're closing up portals in Mars, yeah, dude. I mean, oh, it gets man. out there, bro. Oh man, that that I mean, that goes into full heresy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but so, we've all heard it. So I think Christendom yeah. is we are prone to that. I think all religions are prone to extremism. Absolutely. Why Israel though? Why do you see that like in Israel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's because I mean biblically you can't go through this and not see how important it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're saying like there's a lot of people there that get there and they just they they're they're just acting funny. Well, there is there is like a there is something called Jerusalem syndrome. It is like a medical thing. No way. Last time I looked it up. Yes. Okay. I, didn't I mean, even, even know the about Simpsons that. did an episode on. It. No way. Yes. True story. It's just like fact people, check me somebody. Yeah. Uh, but Matt Jerusalem syndrome it. is a thing. People people go and they get they were like I'm the Messiah. That that happens. Oh my goodness! Oh, there's you guys. No, I didn't even know dude, about go that. Go down the. I need go to go down, down the, the rabbit trail. Syndrome, rabbit trail. I will. There's some fun videos. I will. I like don't conspiracy actually. videos. I don't know. It's just entertaining. So, well, I never wanted to go because I, my taste was kind of the Americanized political. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. We support and sure. and I don't know, like being. You know, being in you know Y two K that whole era, yeah, like yeah, growing yeah, up in the yeah. charismatic church, 
it didn't feel, it just felt wonky. Like hmm. I never saw some, this is me personally. I'm not saying you're not out there, but I yeah, never yeah, yeah, saw yeah, someone yeah. that was like this crazy charismatic, like Israel wearing, you know, like a woman wearing a yarmulke on a prayer shawl. Right, like right, that right, would right, never right. happen like yeah, in yeah, Israel. Yeah. But like, I never saw like incredible fruit in their lives. Sure. But there are people like, if I look at Dr. Brown, right. Who's right. like loves Israel and, uh-huh. and goes over there and yeah. knows the language. Like, when he speaks, Amazing. like I see this depth and this yes. wisdom and this knowledge. I never saw that kind of from the crazy, like the fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he- I was a little bit more hesitant. And my line mm-hmm. was this. I said, I don't want to go to Israel. I want to go to Palestine. Uh, right? Like, come yeah, on. Yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah, enough yeah. Christians in Israel. Yeah, I want to go to where? I want to go to Palestine. To reach people. Dude, when I went, I was expecting this mm. moment. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have it the way that I thought I would have it. Wow. You wow. know what I left with? I do. The first thing, my, so I've, I've done two trips. And this isn't about me. I want to hear, we're here to well, that's great. I want to hear all about it. First trip was five days after okay. we found out my wife had cancer. Okay, so we found out, and we got on, no, three days. We found out, we drained her lungs the next day so she could even fly, and we landed. So it, we were in crazy headspace anyway. Mm. But I left Israel with a view of sovereignty. Mm. It didn't happen while I was there. Beautiful, but, it, but I left Israel with this Beautiful. with an understanding of the sovereignty of God, mm. and I felt so small. Wow, I felt insignificant. Reading the book because you're there and you're like, wow, this is here, and this has been, yeah, 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 yeah. and it shouldn't be. Yes, like everything says it shouldn't be, and it's there. Whether I'm involved or not, this thing's happening. Yes, and then Amen. when you stand Amen. on like these ruins. And you and you go and see where Jesus was, like, and you and you see, you just see it. You're like, wow, I'm off in like the middle of nowhere, like running around, preaching. And like, I know God's touching people. <laughs> and but sometimes I think I'm doing something yeah, great. And, and then, then I'm like, realize, and I'm there. Uh, I'm like, wow, this thousands <laughs> and thousands of years, yeah, 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 of this monotheistic. How humbling. Right. And yeah. it's happened whether I know about it or I'm involved right. or not. Like, like this has all happened. I think there's only like. I don't know what, 15 <laughs> or 20% of the prophecies are still left to happen. Mm. But like 80 in here, of our 80% have already That's amazing. happened. It's amazing. We need to get you a new Bible. No, 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 that no, 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 no. Everybody, there. I have new Bibles. Okay. This is my, this is you, my. This is your trusty this is, sword. Dude, you, you get it. I get it. Oh, I get it. I get it. I Unfortunately, I've given away. I say unfortunately. I did it prompted by the Holy Spirit. Nonetheless, I still am sad I don't have them. I've given away a lot of my Bibles. I have two. Uh, yeah. this one. This one had somebody else's name. I got it for like nine bucks. And you've just online. kept it. Yeah, CBD, Christian Book Distributors, with like somebody else's name. Wow. On it. And, and you just kept it. Dude, this is my this is my ride or die. I can tell you've definitely preached a lot from Luke 10. Dude. So you know how good it is? You know? Yeah. I yeah. was on Luke 10 for oh, a yeah. while. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's the dirt on your hands. And that's you, from opening it. Yeah. That's this. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I will give people a taste. Yeah. No, but, what, what do they say? Your life's, your, you, you, some, you want to see somebody who's got it all together, find somebody with their Bible falling apart. I have other Bibles that I use at home for study, but this is my yeah. take on the road, preaching Bible. Ooh, and I like that sticker. I dude, need one of those. I'll find like like checks in here. No like, way. I'll, yeah, like I'll be down ministering and someone will like put a check. Throw like a check in there. bucks in there. A beautiful. And I don't even know where it came beautiful, from. Beautiful, man. Well, when you get done with that. I was in there for like two years one, like once. I didn't even know. Pass that on to me. It's obviously got the anointing. Dude, this is, this <laughs> is, this thing, it, needs, it needs a hug. Bro, I recently um, tell you a cool story about yeah. uh, a Bible that I gave away. Um, I, you know, I've, I've just given a few Bibles here and there. I just feel prompted the Holy Spirit to give somebody a Bible. Yeah. Uh, the last gift that my grandfather gave me before he passed uh, was a Bible and uh, had the opportunity to give that to my little brother who's a pastor now. He's pastoring in Kentucky. Uh, but recently I was in Michigan. And I was preaching. And something that I do every year is I buy a brand new pew Bible. Mm-hmm. You know what a pew Bible is? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like one of the hard shell Bibles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, squared off. Oh, yeah. Big print. ESV. It's what I like. Mm-hmm. It's, what I, it's, it's what I'll do for my daily devotional yep. reader. So every year I'll choose, like, I'll get a new packet of highlighters. I love a brand new package of highlighters. Get a new packet of highlighters, new pens, and then I will say, okay, I've got four highlighters here. Mm-hmm. And this year, as I read the Bible, I am going to highlight four different topics of study that I'm interested in, interested in that I feel like the Holy Spirit is sort of wanting to highlight to me this year. Mm-hmm. So 
this past year, I, I had a color for the commandments of Jesus. I wanted every time I saw a commandment in the Gospels, uh, I wanted to highlight it, right? Because in the Great Commission, something a lot of people skip over is whenever Jesus says, go, mm-hmm. make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Yeah. What I've learned as I've taught the Great Commission is that most Christians don't actually know what the commandments of Jesus are. Okay. Unfortunately, a lot of preachers are not aware of what the commandments of Jesus are. But whenever Jesus gives us the Great Commission, he gives us enough content to teach and to preach for the lifetime of our ministry, his commandments. If all I did was teach and preach the commandments of right. Jesus, I would have enough sermons until Jesus came back. Come on. You know, so you don't really need to suffer for a lack of content. I know sometimes people are like, well, I can't preach because I can't come up with anything original. Right. Well, look at Jesus' first sermon. He took that from his cousin. Repent, yeah. for the kingdom of heaven yeah, is at yeah, hand. Yeah, you know, yeah, if yeah. you don't know what to preach out there, but you're feeling called, just go right. download one of Will's podcasts and do preach his messages, do all right? So it's okay. I think God's fine with it. Jesus did it. So I wanted to highlight all the commandments. That was one thing. Okay. I also wanted to highlight everything about finances because I wanted to learn about money. Okay. I wanted to learn more about uh, what the Bible has to say about money. And I had a few others. But I was, I'm, I'm preaching in Michigan, and uh, usually when I preach somewhere for the first time, I tell my testimony. Yeah, you know, a little yeah. bit of my testimony, yeah, you know. You, you do that, right? Because yeah. you, you want to connect. It's a little baseline, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you want to connect yeah. with people. You know, you want them to like you. Yeah. You know, you're like, hey. You're, you're building a, rep, a repertoire. Yeah, yeah, I'm nice. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm fun. Yeah. You like me, I like you. Right. You know, we're cool. I got you. So I'm sharing the testimony, right? Well, at the end, this girl comes up to me, and she looked rough. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest. She looked really rough. She had a Band-Aid on. It looks like she had a, she had a, a, some stitches, some fresh okay. stitches. She looked a little bruised and battered, to be honest. Like she had okay. a bruise on her neck, and it's, and uh, she she looked she looked bad. She looked bad, but she was she was uh, young, and she was a pretty girl. But you could just tell she had been through some things. Yeah. So she came up, and then she opened up a notebook, and she pointed to something she wrote down uh, from the message. It's going to make me emotional. Think about mm. it. <laughs> and um, I had said in there, God spoke to me when I got saved that I had six months. Or I was going to, I needed to come home to him or I was going to be dead in prison. And she wrote that down. And she said, hey, this is what the Lord said to me, I, that to come home to him. Mm. And I was like, yeah, that's, you should do that, girl, mm. you know. And, um, and she said, uh, I just got out of jail. And I was like, really? Like, when? She was like, two days ago. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, are you okay? Is this your church? She said, I've never been to church. I said, well, <laughs> This is a great church. You should come to church here, you know? And I said, do you have a Bible? And she's like, no, I, I've never had a Bible. And, dude, I just took that pew Bible, and I was deep in it, Will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I had all my yeah, highlights, yeah, yeah. bro. And I was like, well, now you got my Bible. Come on. Dude, it took me out. And uh, I just hugged her, and we started praying. I'm sure people thought I was weird. Like, who the heck is this girl? This pastor is, like, right, hugging. right. You know, because, dude, I took right, hold of right, her, right, man. Right. I'm like, you're my sister. You know, if, th- if this is the Bible that's mine, it's the Bible that's yours. Take it. She yeah. opened it up. She said, but your highlights are in here. I'm like, hey, maybe they'll bless you too. Yeah. So you never know. Like, you're, you you know, the, 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 the dirt stains on your Bible could mean a lot to somebody yeah. years from now, even if it's your son. Yeah. No, you know? it's such a good word, man. I love it. I've I've given a few away. There's one only one I regret and I can't go into the story. But yeah, I'm missing whole sections. Like Right. Right. But I just gave I gave my son a Bible when he turned sixteen. I was I was supposed to get my daughter when she just turned sixteen a couple of days ago. I forgot though. But sorry, bro. She has she has a really good one. I'll I'll get her another one. I love I love giving Bibles away. You use logos, right? I do. Yeah. 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 I use yeah, I love logos it. as well. I yeah. I love it. Stinking love it. Yeah. And I want to do something because mm-hmm. actually you were the one that really first got me into logos. Really? Okay. Yeah. I went to, I was meeting you for coffee. Yeah. Yeah. And you're down there like sermon prepping at this coffee shop. And I was like, wait, you're like, yeah, I just logos and did, 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 Yeah. Um, and, and I actually ended up getting it. I love it. Uh, it's, it's amazing resource. Shout out to the folks at Logos, dude. I, we would this, like a free download, by the way, for shouting this out. Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? Uh, I, I've never done this. They actually just reached out to me. <laughs> really? They gave us a code. 
We're oh, not, come there's on. There's no exchange of anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you, if what they said is we want to get logos to missionaries on the field. Oh, come so on. So if you are going to buy logos, we're going to throw on. the code in the description, put it in there, and that'll help give us uh, logos for our missionaries, pastors, whatever on the come field. Come on. They're incredible. So that way, if they buy it mm-hmm. and they put in that code, it'll help. The, it, Logos is going to donate. They're, they're going to they're going to donate uh, to missionaries and to pastors in Iris amazing. on the field. So That's we'll amazing. So that in the description, and they're not paying us anything. Yeah, but man, they said we want it. We want to serve your team around the field. Beautiful. And Beautiful. I said I I would have no problem talking about it. This wasn't even prepared. But no, I, no, no, no. I yeah. love it. I love it. I I use it. I use it all the time. So if you if you want that, go and do that. Pastor Phillips. Yeah. Are you writing a book? I am writing a book. Can I say one thing about the you Bible? You can say whatever you want. And then we'll talk about the book. Sure. So this is something I told someone recently. I said, you know, there's never been a time in my life where I have been h- hungry for God. Mm. And I tell the Lord, I want to know you more. And and I want to pray more. Right? Because that's kind of what we say. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm hungry for God. I want to spend more time with yeah. you. There's never been a time where I've been hungry for God that God didn't tell me to pick up the Bible more often. Yeah. Never been a time. There's never been a time. Every time I've gotten close to Jesus in any season of my life that I would consider to be additionally close, okay. I've always felt like he's always said to me on my way into the prayer closet, grab the Bible. There's something about the scriptures, and I think that this generation is now going to rightly divide the word of truth more so than we've seen previous generations that are close to his heart in prayer and spirit-filled ministry. I think we're seeing a value for truth come up with Mm -hmm. the spirit unlike we've ever seen before, and that's what I—I know people dog on Gen Z— but, dude, I think Gen Z is going to be just powerhouses in the spirit, yep. and they are not just going to be people of spirit, but they are going to be people of truth as 100%. well. 100%. Because they love the word. They do. And they love authenticity, yep. and they want real encounters with Jesus. So I think that what we saw earlier this year in Wilmore, Kentucky, at the Asbury mm-hmm. uh, College Revival, I think is just an appetizer of what's to come. The Lord yep. told me when Wilmore happened, do you know why it happened in Wilmore, Kentucky? I said, why, Lord? He said, because my will is more. <laughs> I said, hey man, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> Let, I, dude, and I've been there. Oh, yeah. I've been there. I used to preach down the street at this little church. Oops. And um, one day I, I'll tell you a, a quick story. We, we'll get to the book. No, I, I'll be I'll good. be quick. We, there's but, no hurry, dude. But I, I went to the um I went up to Asbury because at the time I was like, I'm a revivalist. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of young people out there. I'm a revivalist. That's what I'm on. I met Lionel Cooley one time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he is a revivalist. Oh, yeah. He had the Brownsville, Pensacola thing, worship for like years. And uh, I'd never met him before. He said, Hey, I'm Lindo. How you doing? I said, Hey, what's up? I'm Lyle. And he said, What do you do? I said, I'm a revivalist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know who you hey, are. Hey, yeah, amen. Yeah. So one day I went up to Asbury and um, there, the, the, um, uh, the school was closed. I was preaching down the street, but the, um, the, ch- the chapel, the door was ajar. And so I just opened it up and went in. And uh, just standing there by myself, you know, just looking. Because I'd heard, oh, there's a revival here in the 70s. <laughs> and then this janitor came up. And he was pushing a little mop, yeah. you know. And he said, can I help you? And I said, oh, I'm preaching down the street. He said, well, we're closed. And I said, well, um, I read there was a revival here in the 70s. He said, that's true. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm sure I got to leave. He's like, you do. Yeah. And I was like, can I have some time to pray? And he was like, be my guest. Come on. You're not going to bother me. Let's go. So, bro, I went up there, and I'm telling you, Will, I just yeah. knelt down at that banister, and I just went for it. I'm like, God. <laughs> you know, I'm down there on my knees, bro, with my hands up. This guy's in the back with a dust mop. Come on. I'm like, Lord. I, I want to see revival. You did yeah. revival. In the, yeah, yeah. Revival here. I've never seen revival. I want to see revival, God. Wow. I want to see it. Yeah. I want to see it. And, uh, bro, I'll never forget that story. So when I saw the uh, Asbury thing happen this year, I was like, that is so cool. Dude. It, did you go up? No, I tried. But I uh, by the time that they were, uh, yeah. like, wrapping it up, they yep. were already like, hey, we don't want anybody else in here unless you're from Gen Z, I think. I knew it had to be gone because my kids wanted to go. Yeah. That's awesome. I went out in 98 to Asbury. and There was a move in 98? No. Oh. You just went. My sister went to school there. So I have done drugs in the bushes on the Asbury campus. No way. <laughs> yeah. So you weren't walking with the Lord at no, the time. No, not at all. Not at all. I went up to go wow. visit my sister who went there and really gave her life to the Lord there, gave her life to missions there. I went up to visit her 
you know, hang out. Actually, we went to a Dave Matthews concert. In Lexington? I don't remember where yeah. it was, but I remember lying and getting uh, uh, fifth row center stage at Dave Matthews. Dude, wow. I could get anywhere. But yeah, I did. I did drugs in Asbury. Hey, great. Kentucky! Kentucky's a special place, bro. I love it. Cane Ridge Revival mm -hmm. took place there. Oh yeah. Um, who was born? Who was born in Kentucky? The revivalists in the late forties. Uh, um, you know who oh. it is? No. Do you say Co? Yeah, bro. I love Co. Yeah, he's he's such an underrated revivalist. I love to hear other people bring him up. I spent some time with William the Branham. Oh, okay. Branham's from Kentucky. Bro, did you is know he? there's 120 counties in Kentucky? It's the upper room state, baby. What else? Tell me else. Let what me else tell is you, about man. Kentucky? Kentucky, bro, is a very important place, and I'm from Kentucky. It's stunning, too, by the way. Yeah. Depends well, on where you go. It's pretty... I, I've never had a bad experience there. No, it's, it's a great place. there, too. Yeah, yeah. Don't, know why, don't let I, Don't put the word out there, too. Stuff's too. cheap. I recently went up there and stayed at the Kentucky Castle, which is like an, a legitimate castle. Really? Yeah. A friend of mine, I didn't know this, but he co-owns it. So he blessed me and gave me the house uh, that they have on the property, there, their farmhouse. They Come got on. a big farm and everything. Anyways, the book, right? Yeah. Can I, can I just say something about it? You say whatever you want. Um, I, it's not, I'm not trying to sell it. It's not done, so I don't have anything to sell you. Yeah, what's, what's um, the Lord put, putting on your heart? Yeah, so I recently spent six months, as you know, teaching through the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. And so I taught a sermon series for six months called The Wine and the Wineskin. Yep. Yeah. So it was about the spirit and the structure of the early church in the book of Acts. And what I went on a hunt for in Acts was principles, okay, marks that I could take and extract from the book of Acts and apply to our church today in 2023. Yeah. And so that's what the book is about. It's called The Wine and the Wineskin. I'm reteaching through the entirety of the sermon series. I'm working on it. I'm going second edition on it yeah. in LSM, our Legacy School of Ministry. Yeah. Um, and after that's finished, I'm going to put together the manuscript and hopefully ship it out probably sometime in late 2024. Come on. So that's that's the desire, man, because yep. I think we need we need we need to not reimagine but reunderstand, you know, God's plan for the church, especially spirit filled churches, because we don't have the privilege of reimagining church. No, we don't get to, uh, you know, make church whatever we want it to be. Church is something we receive, yeah. not something we invent. Yeah. Have you ever read the, what is it, the Didache? Didi no. Didache? Mm -mm. It's one of the earliest church documents. Okay. Um, I need to read it then. It, I think it's called The Teaching of the Apostles. It, okay. It, don't quote me on this, but I think it was it was looked at, at becoming canon at one mm. point, when, you know, when they were interesting processing it, and, and it didn't. But I think it's basically like a training manual for early church. Amazing. Uh, take take a read through it. It's not scripture, but sure. there are a lot of the books that I read. Yeah, you know, but it's. Of I think it's the earliest church document. I'm gonna read I it. Think I'm gonna look for it, dude. It's crazy. Wow. You can find it online, and I'm probably mispronouncing it, but it, you know, they, it has like how you baptize. Yes. Right. They're like, what did they say? It's it's beautiful. It goes look for uh, cold water, cold running water. Interesting. And they're like, if you don't have cold running water, you know, find a stream if you don't have a stream like try to find like a lake or you know you want clear water and you know but if if all you have is this like it, it's basically like if you have this then do this if you have they that, gave a lot that. of practicals they did and the the harshest thing i mean there's a lot it's very convicting mm. uh but they it has teachings on on taking in apostles and prophets wow so one of the things it says is you know if a prophet comes and they ask you for anything, they're a false. Or no, if an apostle comes and they ask you for anything, they're a false apostle. Like asking for money. Anything. Yeah. Wow. Anything. That's good. Uh, if they stay longer than three days, they're a false apostle. Wow. Yeah. So they're like, hey, get in and get out, man. Yeah. Deliver they, the word of the Lord. Bless go. the people and go. And go. Don't, don't. I mean, I'm, I haven't it's interpreted what I think it means, but it has that feeling like if they're trying to stay to get something, like they need to be out doing the stuff. Yes, like they're false. Yes, it, it, it's 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 a great little read. Wow, Didache, Didache. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll look it up and read it. Did man. I don't know. I'm I'm the worst at this stuff. I I gave it a read recently. I mean those those type of writings and those stories always kind of put the modern church to shame when we, yeah. you know, yeah. when we. It, it's not canon, but I think it's. I think it's it it's a window into the early church, and I that's think we amazing. get a lot of stuff wrong. Now that stuff can't apply in, in this culture today. Absolutely. There's a lot of stuff that can't apply in the culture today, 
But, uh, but you see the heartbeat, I think, of the early church, and they were, they were unapologetic yeah. about the gospel. And you yeah. read some of the early martyrs, you know, in their stories, oof, it'll, it'll cut you deep. We, we were talking about the Bible, and I wanted to ask you to do me sure, a favor. Sure, yeah. Because I think we have a lot. I, I was just at the Sand in Grand Rapids. Yeah. And I got surrounded by, I don't know, four or five, like 14, 15, 16-year-olds. Mm. And they're like, we love the green room. Amazing. So I, I somehow we have a young demographic. That's incredible. I don't know why they're listening it's incredible. to me. Well, they're not. They're usually listening to the guests. But if they're like, listen, I, I need to grow in my study of the word. Yeah. Right? I want to grow. Uh how, where do I start? Mm. What would you, what would you tell them? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, no one ever taught me how to study, <laughs> you know, I really no wish one taught me either. Yeah. You know? And so I would say this is like, even if you don't have anybody to teach you, mm -hmm. you can still grow yeah. and you can still learn. I think sometimes people think, well, unless somebody's holding my hand, walking me through the scriptures, I'll never be able to learn. But the Holy Spirit is our teacher and our helper, and I think that he'll always be ready to meet you with your um, dedication to studying the Scripture. So if somebody said to me, hey, where do I start? Yeah. You know, number one, I would say, number one, get a physical Bible. Get you a physical Bible. Just the first step, get you a physical Bible. Don't read it on your iPad. Don't read it on your phone. There's nothing wrong with the apps, but get you a physical Bible yep. because I want you to get in relationship with your Scripture, mm -hmm. right? And so I want tactile touching, feeling, and knowing this yeah. thing, right? Yep. So that's what I would tell them. Uh, I would encourage you, this is just my personal preference, but the ESV study Bible and get the big boy, you know? <laughs> if you want to study, get that big boy. And so yeah. you got the ESV study Bible and then take uh, a, a notebook, spiral notebook, okay. get you some highlighters, get you some pens, pencils, whatever it is. And then you set you a time and set you a place that is going to be marked off as your time for Bible study yep. every single day or five to six days a week if you can make it and do that for at least 30 minutes to an hour every day. Now, yep. I can hear people saying already, well, I don't have 30 minutes to an hour every day because uh, it's a lot of time, right? Yeah. But... I would say that we will make time for anything yeah. that's actually important for us. 100%. And anybody that tells me that there is a priority in their life that they won't spend an hour on, I would say it's not a priority, right? right? That's just me. So once you do that, you mark it out. So let's say you're starting with the Gospels and you go with Matthew chapter 1, right? Yeah. Well, in most Bibles, especially in the ESV study Bible, there's always going to be a header and then there's going to be a chunk of Scripture, right. right? So many verses. So what I would endeavor to do is study one chunk every single day. Yeah. So I would look at that header, I would see those verses and say, okay, this chunk is the chunk that I will be studying today. So I will read that through for the first time, not looking for revelation, just reading it for the story. Yep. I'm reading it for information. I'm reading it to learn. I'm reading it to understand. Then I'll read it through again a second time. I try my best to always read out loud as well, yep. just because I like the word of God in the atmosphere. Yep. So I read it through a second time. This time I'm going to slow down and I'm going to look for things that I didn't see the second, uh, the first time. The third time I'm going to start to think through revelation. What is God's intent in writing this? What is God trying to communicate? Then I may read it a fourth time, but this time looking through a different perspective. What about the characters in the in the scripture? If Peter's in this scripture, what if I read it through Peter's perspective? Okay, if Andrew's in this scripture, what if I shift it and then I read yeah. it through Andrew's perspective? So, you know, you read it four or five times, whatever you want to do. Then you start writing down, okay, here's what I'm receiving from the scripture. Here's what I feel like the Lord is speaking to me. Here's the different perspectives that I see and what God could might be saying. Then I get me one commentary. You don't need 10. Right. You don't need five. Just get you one good commentary. What do you recommend? Because there's a lot of depending on if yeah. you're if if you're just starting out, um, a good commentary. I like the commentator Linsky. All right, L E N S K I. Yeah. Most of the commentaries that we have are written by reformers yep. and cessationists. So one of the things that you have to know is that a lot of the commentaries that have made it to us through the years Correct. are not spirit-filled commentators, Correct. right? They're not. It's a good word. It, so you have to know that we don't have a lot of good Pentecostal theologians. Unfortunately, Pentecostalism, in a sense, is kind of new. I mean, even yeah. tongues 
didn't really come back onto the map until the yep. early 1900s, yep. right? So we need some more Pentecostal theologians, yep. right? So I like Linsky. Linsky's a, a, a great theologian. I, I, I read, a great commentator. I read his commentaries like crazy. Right. Those are my favorites. For right. preachers, I like the preacher's commentary. I think that's a great one. Um, there's other commentaries out there. Even if you just go to BibleHub.com, right. I really like BibleHub. Mm-hmm. If you look at a verse, like you you tap the verse, scroll all the way down, and you'll get like eight different commentary comparisons, and yep. you can use that to study. So if you don't have Logos and you can't buy a Linsky right. commentary. Right. And then I, what I do is I read through that commentary, and if I'm on BibleHub.com, I read through another one and maybe read yep. through another one. Yep. And then I write down everything about that passage of Scripture that I have. It's not hard for one full page to be filled up by the end of that 30 minutes on yeah. that singular chunk. Yeah. Then I write my own header. So just like the Scripture has a header, okay. right? I write my own header on the basis of everything. Oh, okay, after all of this information, revelation, and understanding that I've got on this chunk, I'm now going to call this, you know, whatever you want to title that. Now I am writing my own commentary. That's what I'm doing. And if I do that every day, I will have my own commentary on the book of the Bible. Wow. And I have a file in my computer that I do just that. Really? Yes. Where it's I've like, never heard anyone else say this. Yeah. So it's like, this is how I'm going to study. This chunk, this day. Once that chunk is done, I'm done. Yeah. If it's three verses of scripture, praise God. I only have 15 minutes today. If it's 10, 20, maybe today I'm 45 in. And I don't always do this every day because I don't always right, have right. the time. But there was a time I did do it every day mm-hmm. when I didn't have three kids. Yes. It's a, it's, it's, it's a game changer. I, I, uh, I started off just reading. Yeah, absolutely. That's when I first got it. Now, like right now in my life, I, I am studying different theologians. But for me, like to get filled, yes, I listen to the word. Yes. And then almost every night, I'd say seven, well, six, five to six nights a week, mm. I'm, I'm falling asleep listening to a topic that, mm. I, that I uncover as I'm reading. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll hit something. I'll be like, oh, what the heck does that mean? Yes. And then I'll go online and I'll find someone that's preached, some theologian. Yes. Now, I understand what is cessationist now. Yes. And what's probably like, that's right. Like I understand a little bit more of the theologically where I stand. Throw some of that stuff away that I don't like. Throw away any of the extreme stuff, the yes. weird stuff. But there's some great, great. Uh, preachers and teachers i love mike winger do you listen to mike winger i do yeah i love his stuff yeah most of his stuff's just incredible i love um remnant radio yeah 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 yeah. those guys put out a lot of just good stuff that gets you thinking yeah and i find when i listen to a lot of stuff it 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 excites me and i go down a rabbit trail on a specific topic are are they are these are these guys cessationist who mike winger and um i don't think mike winger is i don't um I think he has a. I think he he would say he's thinking biblically with a, seat, with a seatbelt. You know, like I yeah, think yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. yes, miracles can happen. Are they yeah. like incredibly common? Like yeah. every day? N- no. Yeah. But I, I, dude, I there's there's things that uh, MacArthur teaches that I that I love. Me too. There's yeah. things that I, that he teaches yeah, yeah, yeah. that I think are insanely dangerous. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so just because I, you know, just because I like Mike, I don't necessarily agree with him. But I think Mike has a very, I like him like, too. Well balanced, like through and through. Yeah, I like him too. I've listened to some of his sermons as yeah. well, like not just his videos, but his actual yeah. sermons, and I've always enjoyed them. What do you think about people on YouTube uh, or Instagram that? Uh, build their channels off of <laughs> analyzing other preachers. Are we going to go you there? Know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just, you okay. know, I know we don't probably don't have Which much time, ones? but because I mean, give me a, give me a genre. Cause okay. A lot. So here's the person I've been asked about recently and I have no beef if you happen to catch this, uh, but the guy, honest youth pastor, I don't know if you follow him. It's honest youth look. pastor. Uh, yeah. Tell right. Me. And so he's, I think, I think I could be wrong, mm-hmm. bro. Don't get mad at me if you see this. All right. I love your content. Um, but he he's doing exposés on you know famous preachers like Jakes, Furtick, et cetera, et cetera. The more well known preachers that we all know, whom I love, I love Jakes, I love Furtick, I love all these guys. But I've just noticed there is this uh, even Ruslan. You know, you mentioned earlier yeah, yeah. Uh, Ruslan. Like I, lo- he's, I watch, I love his stuff. Yeah, I do too. I I, w- I would say I do too. Um, there's there's people who've been on his show that I really like, but it's an interesting thing, and I'm not really sure how I feel about the genre as a whole yet. I'm not familiar with this guy. Okay, so like, and what I mean by the genre is the genre of media where we say, okay, pastor so-and-so said this on Sunday, let's mm-hmm. analyze his sermon, right? Like, 
it's just it it's a new thing and it's it's it is a thing now. Yeah. People are building enormous platforms. Oh yeah. on the back of commentating on Christian culture and Christian leadership, right? And it's re- like first of all, here's what I would say as a pastor, all right? It's really hard for us to defend ourselves against you guys. Now, no one's putting my content up there cuz I'm not Stephen Frederick or TD Jakes. But what do you expect them to do? You know, do you want them to right. film a response video every right. time you guys put something up? Do you want them to explain their position every time they say something in a one-minute soundbite that, you right. know, you can say, well, that's not really biblical. I disagree with that. That's very difficult. Mm. And, like, the what on from the pastoral side of things is, like, as a pastor, there's so much things that you just can't say. And it's not wise for you to address because you are held accountable in certain ways to a group of people that you pastor, and you don't want to put your foot in your mouth and, you know, do something that then is going to look bad on them. It sounds like there's a situation. No, there's no situations. Okay. I, I'm more so saying this from the standpoint of, like, I don't think pastors are getting the opportunity to say the same things that these pundits are. In what, what Like, help me with this. I, I really want to understand what you're saying. Sure. So, so do you, are you saying that, they like, they shouldn't defend themselves? Are you saying that? No. That, I, I mean, I think I would. You Personally, would I would if I if I felt that I that I had the time to, but I would assume that these guys don't. So I think, I think it's dangerous. Whoever yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's yeah. dangerous to sit at a keyboard, and, yeah, and start call, taking pot shots, right, at people. Yeah. That being said, I've done this, right. Right. I mean, that video you made about me. <laughs> <laughs> to the moon. I almost yeah. responded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like I think it's dangerous. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. Very yeah, dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Um. I've had the I've had the chance to be on the receiving oh, side. Oh, that's of right. You. That's right. And, okay, yeah, I know where you're going. And now. I've also had the chance to see some of my greatest heroes. Yes, get torn apart. Yes, and I think one of the reasons why I like Mike Winger, even though I yeah, is I see him take a very leveled approach. Like yes, his even I've I've seen this in Rusalon as well. Yeah, even though they've both said things about people I know and love that I would disagree with yeah um i think that there is a place where where we do need to speak to what's going on yeah globally, and we should speak into the church yeah and i would say there's an ounce of that like maybe criticism on the internet that's actually called us higher there's actually a yes that's called us higher yes I think without the internet the prophetic movement wouldn't have been called on the carpet right and i think they needed some of they it. needed that yeah I, I i do think that they needed it so I see the blessing. I just think it's dangerous. Yeah. And you really need to guard your heart mm-hmm. in it. Uh, uh, and you need to guard your heart against what you're listening to. And I face this personally with mm-hmm. with some of that criticism mm-hmm. going to people that I know and love mm-hmm. that have totally backed away from the things of the spirit because depending on whether you're st- you're strong or not in that moment. Maybe yeah. like you had someone die of yeah. cancer that's close to you. And yeah. you get you get and you listen to some of these people just start tearing away like the healing movement. Totally. And, and I actually it, totally. it actually happened to a family member of mine where they they started to question everything. They started to mm. question the spirit to the point where I had to sit there and beg with them, like mm. like please, like this isn't who you are. This isn't mm. like so I think it's very, very dangerous. I just think it's dangerous. We need wisdom. We need grace. But I think it's dangerous. Mm. Yeah, I do too. And I don't want to be known for what I... I want to be known for what I'm for, not for what I'm against. Right. And a lot of these people are making platforms off of what they're against. You know, here, here's here's kind of what I think is happening. And this is just... Dude, we love all these guys. Mm. We're saying this as we're watching all of these channels and enjoying them. Oh, and yeah. Are, and are appreciating the benefits of yeah. them. So like with Mike, with the guy, Honest Youth Pastor, with Ruslan, with these guys, like, we love all of y'all. If somehow somebody clips this and is thinking we're saying something negative, totally. we love them. We yeah. we think they're amazing. We watch their channels, and we the think time. that they're doing a great work. Been fed and encouraged and grown deeper in the Word. Absolutely. Especially so, Winger. Yeah, oh, dude, me too. Dude, like His series on divorce is one of the best I've ever heard. But anyway, did, I did, cut you uh, off. I don't, well, I don't know if you saw, like, he did a, he did a thing on Bethel. So like, yes. you know, which we love. Yep. We're very connected with yep. Bethel. Uh, and the thing is, is that I appreciated this about him. 
is like he spent like 20 hours. Yeah. He was like, hey, you guys keep emailing me, asking me to check this church out. So yeah. I did. And I spent 20 hours. Yeah. And now I'm going to share with you my position. I got no problem with that. Yeah. That's totally fine. I, at some point, people are going to do this about legacy and about me. Yeah. Perhaps. I don't know. Maybe. But anyways, the, the point I'm trying to make is I did something this last year around Christmas time. Okay. I had a lot of time on my hands because it's Christmas and we take two weeks out of the Dude, office. You are a Christmas family. In yes. Christmas church. Oh, big time. Big time, right? So I spent Christmas just like, you know, chilling. So I got a lot of things. I got a lot of time on my hands. A lot of things to post on social media, right? So I, I posted some things that were a little controversial, all right? So I was given some thoughts. I won't go into it, but I was given some thoughts on, you know, how I felt about where church was in America. And uh, some of what I posted was a little controversial. It also felt a little cathartic. You know what I mean? I got it out there. Yeah, yeah. My wife was like, hey, maybe don't post that. I'm like hitting the button. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's Christmas. <laughs> I ain't, Yeah, I ain't got nothing yeah. better to do. I need a little something happening in my life. I ain't got, there ain't no sermons to prep. There ain't no church to do. Let's spice this, you know, spice this thing up a little bit, right? And, um, and I was like, no, I feel good. I feel good about sending this. It's it's where I'm at. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. It's how I feel. It's honest. It's genuine. It's legit. And I want to share vulnerably. I hit the button, right? So it goes out. Here's what happened. Post went crazy. It actually went crazy. It was, it was, it was a, 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 probably one of the more popular pieces of content that I'd posted. And a lot of people commented on it. A lot of people liked it. And a lot of people on the other side of the fence as me, you know, in regards to their theology and their church style, loved it. They felt seen by it, which I love because I like building bridges. Right. Like you said, it's not about what we're right. against. We want to be known what we're for. Yep. And then a lot of pastors, bro, didn't like it, didn't comment on it, but DM'd me and thanked me for posting it. Why? Because they they're like, I can't like this. People can't see that I liked this post because this is controversial. What did, can, can I ask it? It'll take us down a completely different. I'll, I'll tell you off air, but like. Yeah, bro, it was like pastors were just DMing me like, this is awesome, well done, never heard anybody say anything like this before, this is great, I love this, like, thank you, but won't like it and won't comment on it. Yeah. Right? Because they have a vested interest in protecting their position, yeah. right? Because if they are seen as incredibly controversial, then that could cause a certain number of people who are a part of their church to jet. Right. And the more people that leave your church, it's going to change the landscape of your church. And I don't know any pastor or any business person or anybody who is not going to self-protect to the point that they try to take care of themselves, their family and everything they poured their heart and soul right. into build. Right. So the more controversial a pastor becomes, the more dangerous that it is for their congregation. Mm. Right. I stand to lose a lot by being extremely controversial online. Right. If, if half my church decides, you know what, pastor, I'm out. I don't like your positions on those things, right. so I'm gone. Yep. So what could happen as a result? Well, I may have to fire people That may because I don't have the income. That may affect people's family. Yep. What if it affects my family? What if I can't, what if I can't provide for my kids as I have? Right. Controversy costs pastors a lot. Yeah, it also Go ahead. their church with a whole tribe. Of people that feel the same way. It feels the same way, which right. is dangerous because then they just go down that road. I've we seen that. We've seen that happen a lot with politics. We've seen that yep. happen a lot with certain elements of uh, theology. A lot of different things. But the, like, the Bible doesn't give us permission to build a one-dimensional church. Right. Now that's, com that's a completely different topic of conversation. I'd love to go into it. Yep. We probably don't have time. We can do but it the, another time. But the thought of, like, well, my church is just all about worship. Well, who gave you permission to do that? Right. I I'm interested. So you mean to tell me that you are allowed <laughs> <laughs> to plant a completely one-dimensional church. Yeah. Like, you are not accountable to all the tenets of Scripture of what church must do. You, not you. You're, not, you're, you're allowed to do a one-dimensional thing. Okay, great. Got it. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's an actual church, but I understand that you have a conviction. Right. Praise God. So here's what I noticed after I post that thing. The next day, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to post again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was licking my lips. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it hit that dopamine button. <laughs> you know like, yeah, 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 yeah this is great like yeah. i'm man you know people connected with that let me double down did i dm you i don't think so i don't think you dm me I'm trying to i'm just sitting here this whole time you're like trying to figure out trying, what, what did you post? Yeah, anyway it's okay um so no i i so i was like oh i'm i'm doubling down 
I'm gonna I'm gonna talk some more about this topic. It's obvious people are interested in it. I got followers as a result. I got result. I got likes as a result. Yeah, yeah. I feel great. I'm I'm feeling insightful now. Yeah. You know. So let me post something else. Dude wrote out a whole thing, and the Holy Spirit was like, "Yo, no, you're not posting that." Right. And I'm like, "Hold on, wait. I felt good about posting it yesterday, right. but no, you're not posting it today." Because for me, it was like I naturally felt inclined to post more of what got likes and what yeah. got attention, even though that's not the thing that, you know, I felt like was good for me to post. Bro. And that brings us back to the way we started this in worship. Yep. Exactly. You hit something. Exactly. And then you just got to keep going. You keep doing it. You say, oh, this is good. It's feeding me. I'm making yep. money. I'm getting attention. I got likes. I'm doing all this stuff, right? But it may not necessarily be the thing that you're supposed to do. Yeah. And I think that's where, when it comes to the people that only that don't have churches right. and they don't have congregations that they're accountable to, the only the on, the only thing that they and I'm not trying to accuse them, but it's like they're not responsible for stewarding thousands of people. Right. They can post whatever they want whenever they want, and there is no consequence yep. to them posting nothing. Yep. Yep. In fact, the more controversial that they get the more attention that they'll get because yeah. people love clickbait today. They do. So that's the thing. It's like, go easy on the pastors, man. Like, have grace for them. I'm not saying don't call them out. I definitely think we should say, hey, yeah. like, this isn't right when they say stuff that's heretical. For sure, yep. call them out. But also, you got to understand, it's like they have a different measure of responsibility. Mm -hmm. I'm not making excuses for them, but I am saying it's like, we, we just need to love our pastors well. I, uh, I just listened to Remnant Radio. I was like, yesterday... Uh, yesterday, the day before, uh, they they interviewed Costi Hen. Okay, and I don't know if you know Costi Hen. He was Benny's nephew. Okay, yeah, when, yeah, 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 when, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, anti, you know, anything. At least that this is the character that I had of him. Okay, like extreme anti, you know, uh, MacArthur camp, Calvinist, right? Has mm -hmm. come out. He's done a lot of stuff that come out against the spirit filled church and okay. the faith movement, like. And I listened to... The hen guy has. Yeah. Oh, Steve interesting. Hen. Okay. And I listened to his Remnant Radio podcast. And I walked away being like, this is, this is a good dude. I might wow. disagree. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah. He's he's really a good dude. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And is, is going out of conviction. And I know he has said things that have come against beautiful friends of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But like at the end of the day, there there is, there, there are there is a group of of people out there that's trying mm. to navigate this tension. Yeah. And I just try to find find them over over the controversy. Uh, me ones. too. Me too. We want to love everybody yeah. as best we can and yeah, man. and grow and get better and have grace and you know, I, I think we're we're together in that. And I yeah. think a lot of these, you know, folks that we're mentioning today are in the same place. Turn the mic off, turn the camera off. Yeah. We're all just trying to love our way through the darkness. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I have a conviction, and I and I know you do because we've talked about it before. Like I just I want to grow. Yes, me right? too. And I think we do me need too. to be challenged. It there's this line that gets crossed somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like this invisible line. It's whenever my heart goes bad that I just start slinging. Like I can't believe they did this. They're punks, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of you course, know, they're, of course. They're, they're they're doing the unpardonable sin. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I was they're like taking the name of the Lord in vain. Yeah. Back to that, dude. So. I try to go low and slow. That's what we learned from Heidi. Low yeah. and slow. Low and slow. Lyle. That's it. Listen. Great podcast. I Thank love you, you for dude. having me, bro. I love you. I'm going to have you back on. Okay. Sounds good. Because I actually want to get you back on with a couple people. I want to do like a panel with That'd a couple be fun. of pastors. That'd be fun. But before we, before we end this, number one, um, tell, you, tell you people where your church is located. Sure. And the service times, how they can watch online. If Absolutely. They, if they yeah. Like. So the church is called Legacy Nashville, at Legacy Nashville on Instagram and on TikTok and on Facebook. Uh, on YouTube, we release every single week something called Global Prayer Room on Thursday nights. And a lot of people from all over the world Dude, watch that. Dial in. It's really cool. Yep. We've been doing it now since 2020, so three years. Yep. Uh, every single Thursday, never miss a Thursday of prayer room. So check us out there. If, you, if you're if you in Nashville and want to come out and check out our church, uh, we are in East Nashville at 901 Delbrook Lane. Service time's at 9, 1030, and 1230 currently. <laughs> but I would ask you to pray for us, touch and agree, in Jesus' name, for a new building. Come on. Because we need some new property, and we need a new yeah. facility as soon as possible. Yep. So that's where we're at, guys. Love y'all. And... 
you guys have a school of ministry. We do. It's called Legacy School of Ministry, and it's a nine-month discipleship program, kind of like a internship, but you're getting a lot of education. Uh, we got worship. You got prayer. We encounter. We empower. We educate. It is an awesome program. We have yeah. over 40 students in our first year yeah. right now. You'll come and preach at it. I'm I so excited because this student group this year is phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's so good. We have over 20 students in our second year. So we got over 60 students in our school of ministry, our internship program. Mm -hmm. We are partnered with a fully accredited college. Yep. When did this happen? Yep. This year is our first full year. You can actually earn college credit by going to LSM. And there is a program uh, that, that you can apply for through their university where you can actually pay for some of your LSM tuition by simultaneously getting your degree. The whole team from Let's that go. college came this week to check out our school, and they are so stoked. They've given some people scholarships. Come on. Like, it's amazing, man. People are earning their master's degree at our school right now. I love it, dude. And you have a, you have a school. We do. Legacy Academy. Yeah. It's for it, right now, it serves pre-K through seventh grade. We have uh, over 50 students that are a part of that. My children um, are a part of that. And then in that school, get this, last year, 100%, not a single student, 100% of our student body tested above yeah. their class. Of course. of course. Of course they did, dude. Little geniuses. Dude, I love you, Lyle. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, bro. And, love you, uh, man. Dude, I hope you guys like this. If you didn't, you, you're just... Still like dead, it. Dead, Hit dead, the bell. Dead, dead <laughs> Yeah, Hit come it, on. Things. It Help helps, us share it the helps gospel. Us get it out. That's exactly right. And uh, man, it's blessing so many people. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for being here. Love you. And we will catch you guys on the next uh, Green Room. Dude, that was incredible.